Rose product management is actually very new and also very sexy and mysterious. And very few people actually know what does a growth product manager do. In fact, it's a very fun, data-driven role and lots of people transition into product management by becoming a growth product manager and lots of traditional PM transition into growth PM as well. In this video, I'm going to share with you what does a growth product manager do with a live examples into a day-to-day -day life with a role's responsibilities and how as a different from the traditional product management and who is suitable for product manager career and make sure to stay until this end video where I'm going to share with you the salary information of growth product manager. Hey guys, this is Dr. Nancy Lee, a director of product featured in Forbes. I've helped 100 people land their dream PM job offer in fan companies and unicorn startup and continue to get promoted as a product leader. In this channel, we cover product management and tech trends. Like and subscribe to the channel for more free training. I was a director of product specialized in growth when I worked for Corporate America, and we also helped several students land the job as a growth product manager. Now, let me share with you top five growth responsibilities of growth product manager and what actually do they do. Number one, a growth product manager is the one who identifies the company growth opportunities and directs the team's effort to drive them. The growth plan works on improving a specific business metrics to grow revenue and profit in the long term. So in a very simple terms, growth product manager focus on growing users, growing revenue, and growing profit. They mainly are doing the five different things on a day-to-day -day basis. First of all, they're managing the product and business needs end to end from acquiring customers all the way to the user customers and all the way to the generating revenue of the customers. And second, growth product managers spend lots of time doing experiments. For example, they specialize in growth hacking and A-B testing, driving data to understand how can you optimize the conversion of customers to achieve the business metrics. Number three, they spend lots of time making data-driven decisions by looking at the end-to-end -end customer funnel. I'm going to give you an example of end-to-end -end customer funnel as an exercise in a few seconds. Number four, they create product features by leading an engineering team. Number five, they create a growth strategy for the entire company. Now let's use a real life example of growth product manager of Amazon as an example. So let's take a look on the amazon.com website. If you are a growth product manager, first of all, you need to list out the funnel, customer funnel of customers on amazon.com, this website. And for B2B customers and B2C customers, there's slightly different type of funnel. For example, for B2B customers, your funnel could be the following, creating contact and qualifying leads creating business needs, evaluating needs, and start the negotiation process, and close the deals, and renew your contract. For B2C customers, the steps might be slightly different by following very similar three funnel process to simplify, we call the top of funnel, middle funnel, and bottom funnel. So for Amazon.com website, the top of funnel is how can they create new users to drive them to Amazon.com and how can they have more existing users go into Amazon.com whenever they search any new items. So that's how the growth product manager working with the marketing team, for example, to create ads campaign on Google, and they can also create influencer outreach marketing campaign to bring more influencers talking about how they buy product on Amazon and give some referral links for them to send traffic to Amazon. These are the examples of the top of the funnel. Once they go to the Amazon.com website, growth product manager need to wear the hat of growth hacking, which means they need to work with data science team, UI UX design team, marketing team, and create a strategy to run A-B testing to understand how can they design the interface to use Amazon to purchase more product from the top of funnel and make them start to browse the product. For example, I'm on Amazon.com right now. Once any customers visit the website of Amazon.com, there's a first impression. They're showing different examples of things they can purchase, different kind of recommended items and books or customization for you. At the girls product manager, um, this person needs to think about how can you run A-B testing to optimize the website views and traffic to make sure that they're going to click into individual items and start to make them have a stronger call to action and to start the next step of purchasing behavior. For example, the girls PM may be thinking about what the color of the call to action item is a yellow, maybe pink. They might run A-B testing to see what's the best color and where do they put this call to action? And what is the top three or four banners they need to display to different type of users so that they're able to create 
um, the best conversion rate to hit the business metrics. And for example, they also put in different kind of discount. They were thinking about what percentage of the discount for our first time users or return users is going to drive the best return. During this process, growth product managers need to define the business metrics. For example, it could be the click through rate of people going to Amazon.com for each top rated items. Could also be the click through rate of the conversion rate of their marketing campaign. And could also be the conversion rate of customers that went to the payment funnel. And all of these are considered as different kind of business metrics throughout the entire funnel that growth product manager need to measure. I have a specific videos right here. I talk in depth regarding different kind of product management metrics that product managers need to measure. You can watch more right here. Once customers start to generate any kind of interest of any product, they move to the middle funnel. And then growth product manager need to understand how are they able to increase the conversion rate if any customers start to pay in certain kind of product. And in this process, they may introduce different kind of product features. For example, I click some banners regarding fashionable shoes by Amazon and start exploring different kind of shoes, uh, fancy shoes and out there. And then Amazon and gross product manager need to decide, are they going to uh, show more examples to drive me continue to purchase in certain type of shoes? Or are they going to prioritize the review of the shoes so that they're able to give me more options um, to quickly uh, purchase this product? For example, this one that clearly made me say there's no customer reviews clearly I'm not going to purchase this right away as someone who just started to engage this website and clearly I'm going to click around other type of shoes and start digging around. In this process, the growth product manager need to optimize the customer journey map, the end-to-end -end experience, the user experience, so that they're able to hit the high conversion rate customers start purchasing things from Amazon.com. Then we move to the bottom of the funnel. The bottom funnel is very smart, which means they start to purchase any kind of product, such as the payment process. Could also be after they finish paying the product, how they can they have reoccurring customers. For example, growth product management may have a product strategy of understanding how are they able to give different kind of promotion, different kind of discount, different kind of notifications. And let me give you a specific, very smart feature one of the grocery stores introduced at the bottom of the funnel. For example, in this screenshot of the grocery store, which is V, I just purchased Chinese grocery. And after I placed the order, it asked me to share all my orders with my friends and family on social media. And any person who purchased through my link, I'm gonna get up to $75 referral fees from this website. So this is clearly a growth product manager features. They decide how would you make the existing customers to bring more friends, refer more people to the platform and also continuously purchase for themselves at the bottom of the funnel. If you like the example of the process, what I told you, you might be a good fit for growth product manager. Now, let me also do a quick comparison between growth product manager and the traditional product management. There are three key differences. Number one, growth product management are way more data-driven compared with traditional product management. I'm not saying that traditional PM are not data-driven growth product manager live in data day in day out they look at the conversion rate every single day and running a b testing to drive the convergence in each steps of customer journey map number two is the definition of customers we always say all the product manager need have a customer empathy now growth product manager their customers is actually the business the business revenue, number of users, the business profit, it's not the individual users like us as a customer anymore. So which means that their own customers are more the business needs. How can they optimize uh, the needs of the business to optimize their profit and revenue? And so therefore, if you're more interested in numbers and making money, gross PM might be a good fit. But if you're more interested in individual customers, have customer empathy solving their pain point, you might be a good fit for traditional product management. Number three, is a team structure. A growth product manager still works with designers, developer team, and data scientist team. But the biggest difference between growth product manager and also traditional product management is that growth product manager actually is working cross-functionally with all the product managers in the company. Because each traditional product manager, let's call them core product managers, are creating individual features to solve the customer needs, customer pain point. And now the growth product manager need to leverage the existing feature from core product manager to figure out what's a customer journey map so that they can extract even more revenue outside of each individual users. So therefore, it is even more cross-functional role compared with traditional product managers. And of course, growth product manager work with data scientists day in, day out to run A-B testing. Oh, falling in love with numbers. I love numbers. Numbers love me.
If I found out what I shared with you super valuable, please make sure to like this video, put your questions down below. Now let's think about who is suitable for product management if you transition into PM. Number one, people with data backgrounds such as data scientists. And I really think you're a very good fit for a girl's PM because you live in data every single day, you're doing experiment. If you are a PhD like me, you might be even better at doing girls hacking, girls PM because you're running experimentation every single day to figure out how to drive the best user outcome. And another profession, very obvious profession, become a girls product manager is somebody who has a marketing background or someone who is very business driven or customer facing roles. And those people are frequently someone who is very sensitive regarding what's the best way to generate revenue for the company and so it's a natural transition for you to directly move into growth product management this is how we design all the study paths for our students who came from business background never work with engineers and we teach them how to work with engineers but they are very intuitive in terms of how to become a growth product manager to generate users and revenue for our customers now let's talk about the most asked question how much growth product manager is getting paid growth product manager right now if you are just a growth pm in the field on average you're getting paid a dollars per year if you're a senior growth product manager you're getting paid at least two hundred thousand dollars per year and this is just a national average if you actually work in san francisco because in general the location is very expensive you're getting paid about 10 to 30 percent higher than what i just mentioned earlier on top of that if you work for one of those fan companies or unicorn startup in silicon valley you're clearly getting paid at least three hundred thousand dollars per year now does gross product manager get paid higher than traditional pm the answer is yes it might be about 10 percent higher than traditional pm because gross product managers are closely related to the revenue of the company and they will have higher compensation if you do a job very well so if you like making lots of money you might be considering transitioning into growth product management by now you'll be asking hey nancy growth product management sounds really cool i want to become a growth product manager what should i do the number one thing you need to do is trying to figure out how can you crack the product execution product metrics interview at the growth product manager because they're very big on metrics how you run a b testing and how would you pick the right metrics and i have a free training goes in depth talking about my computer science PhD framework where I teach you how you're able to easily extract 10 to 20 different kind of product metrics for next round of product metrics interview and I'm gonna link it right here it's the next video you must watch right away and if you like any free content we provide today make sure to like comment and subscribe and share this video with any aspiring product managers this is Dr. Nancy Lee from PM Accelerator.io I'm gonna see you in my next video right here